Hello to all the primary schools in Ireland and thanks for joining Green Schools for our fourth Climate Action Week. This special video is being brought to you live from Green Schools HQ. My name is Grania and I'm a Climate Action Officer and I have a really exciting programme for you today. We've been super busy over the last few months working hard with one of Ireland's funniest and sometimes silliest children's authors and illustrators, Oisín McGann, to bring you a giant climate action storybook. So what's it all about? Well, when a group of friends arrive to play at their local park, they find a crowd of adults running around. The grown-ups are making a big mess and upsetting the animals. So the children decide to do something about it. We Want Our Park Back has been written and illustrated by Oisín McGann and produced by Green Schools. So who's ready for story time with the author? Hi everyone, I'm Ashley McGann, I'm a writer and illustrator, and this is a new book I've done for Green Schools, and it's called We Want Our Park Back. Some grown-ups came to the park today, and all their cars are blocked the way. They're making a mess with the way they play, now we can't play here anymore. There's this guy, he's calling all his mates, and they're climbing over the cars, getting into the park. Just look what they did to all the trees, for wood, for fire, to make their tea. They took all they could and more than they need. Now we can't play here anymore. There's this woman, she's flying down through the air on the trees. It gets chopped down and this woman thinks she's a deer. The hare is not happy. They cooked up smoke with their campfires too. Burning wood they took and the smoke it blew in our faces too. A sick stinky stew. Now we can't play here anymore. So this guy, his bum's on fire. But they have a fire extinguisher. Look at this rubbish, it's filled the lake. All the yucky gunk only humans make. More poisonous junk than the lake can take. Now we can't play here anymore. So there's, look, pulling a welly out of the lake and it's full of muck and other worse stuff. And fish can't breathe. There's a guy there with a rubber ring and they're pushing over a portaloo. The trees, they held all the earth in place on the riverbanks where the river raced. The water's flooding all over the place. Now we can't play here anymore. So I look back, this guy's trying to get out of it, but the water's flooding out into the field and they're all kind of getting rushed out with it. Kids are having to run for it. The grown-ups play in the playground too. They break and take and think it's cool. It looks like a big dump. It smells like a loo. Now we can't play here anymore. So I'm sure you've all seen playgrounds where they get wrecked and Somebody's flying down the zip line, but somebody's about to cut the zip line. This guy's flying off the swing and she's getting thrown up in the air. It's all got a bit mad. They keep taking stuff. They keep burning stuff. They just won't stop, but enough's enough. And we want our park back. They've had enough. They leave in their cars, smoke spouting out. It's in our noses and in our mouths and the air is stinky. We cough and shout that we can't play here anymore. We can fix this yet. We still have time with work and hope. With your brains and mine, we can plant and fix and clear the air. But we can't do this on our own. Look at the place, complete state. But we're not alone, I'm glad to say. They feel sorry now that they ran away. Now everyone's back in the park today and they won't spoil things anymore. Now everyone's back and getting busy fixing the place up. It takes time to fix all the damage done, but we've finished now. We can have some fun. All the kids and the grown-ups, everyone. Now we can play here all day long. I hope you like that. Oisín, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm reading your new storybook for all the classrooms in Ireland. Green Schools children had the opportunity to ask you some questions ahead of this programme and we've narrowed it down to these. What made you want to be an author? Um, well, it started with the books that I was read as a child, um, like Dr. Seuss and Richard Scarry, and I just loved stories. I, I loved stories when I was young and I loved the illustrations in books and they kind of cast a spell on me. I just thought I'd love to be able to do what these other writers and illustrators did for me. I'd love to be able to do that for other people. Um, just the biggest buzz, really. Brilliant. How do you come up with the titles of your books? Um, some titles just pop into my head. I don't know what they're going to be called. And 
sometimes I have to write out lists and lists of titles and I'll play with words um, and just try different things. So it kind of has to be, has to give you a feel for what the book's about and also it has to sound interesting and sound like it could be a good story. And I also Google my titles to see if they've already been used on something else. Because if you've used a title that's already been used 25,000 times, it's probably not a good title to use for a book. Does anyone help you with your writing? Uh, does anybody help me with my writing? Not with the writing bit, really. When I'm working on a book, uh, I write it on my own. But then when um, it, it's time to get published, then it goes to an editor. And an editor is a bit like a teacher. They help make sure that the story makes sense. and. I check my spelling and see if I've made any mistakes. And um, it's very hard for some for me to know how the story will read for somebody else. And that's why you need somebody else to check it. So at that point, you need somebody else, you know, somebody else's help. You can't just do that on your own. But I write the story on my own. And um, for the illustrations, um, we write the story first and then we work out what illustration is going to be best for the story, what we need and how we're going to work them into the book. Um, but the writing at the start is always on my own. Great. Are you famous? Uh, well, if you have to ask. <laughs> um, I'm, I suppose I'm well known in Ireland, at least. Um, my books have been around for a long time. And some of my books, like the Mad Branded books, uh, would, be, would be fairly well known. And the books that I do with Jason Byrne um, that I illustrate... Um, they'd be fairly well known, but um, I kind of am not world famous. I'm not kind of pop star famous, and I don't want to be, to be honest. Um, if I could keep my face out of it altogether, I'd be very happy. Just keep, you know, working the background of my books. That'd be cool. Great. Do you have any other jobs? Um, do I have any other jobs? I do a lot of different types of work. Um, being a, an author and illustrator is a very strange job. Um, so people tend to think that you're you're rich if you have your name on the front of a book but actually most most uh, writers and illustrators have other types of work um so i would i teach um, writing courses sometimes i do a lot of i do some illustration work for other people design work um but most mostly um i'm i'm writing and illustrating books um and doing events so i, I spend a lot of time well used to spend a lot of time driving around, going to schools and libraries. At the moment now, it's kind of mostly on video. What books did you read when you were younger? <clears throat> um, I always feel a little bit guilty when I answer this question because I know I'm going to leave out somebody important every time. So I, I went from books like Dr. Seuss and Richard Scarry and Enid Blyton and Beatrix Potter. Um, and then I loved uh, kind of science fiction and fantasy stories, um, stuff like the Narnia stories and Lord of the Rings. Um, but I read Westerns as well. Um, I, I tried a bit of everything, loved a bit of horror. Um, um, I went through a real Roald Dahl stage. So I, I read loads of different types of books and I read a lot of comics as well. So my illustration is probably more influenced, more affected by comics than it is by anything else. Um, but I read loads of different things when I was a kid. And, and and still do. I'll still read anything, really. I'll try anything once. What is your favourite book that you ever read? Um, I get asked a lot of favourite questions. I, I don't have a lot of favourite things, really. I, I think there's too many good things in life to pick one over all the others. Um, when I was, I suppose, when I was young, the, the writer who had the kind of biggest effect was Roald Dahl, but I don't think that one of his books was ever I, I don't think he ever had a kind of I had a favorite of his books um and Lord of the Rings had a big effect on me when I was young but I wouldn't have said Tolkien was my favorite writer so um I think there are too many interesting things you, you don't have to have a favorite all the time not everything has to be you know has to be in a top five um but uh, and, and they change all the time I'm very fickle I change my mind about stuff all the time you know so I don't really have a favorite one single favorite book but um, I often, um, I often change. I pick one and I go, that's the best. And then two months later, it'll be something else. You know, um, I think there are too many good things in life to pick just one. How long did it take you to write We Want Our Parker? <clears throat> um, uh, how long did it take to write it? The writing didn't take too long. The, the story is very short. Um, if you look at kind of how many words are in the book. Um, so the first draft, as we call it, that didn't take very long. It probably took 
So it probably took a few days to come up with the first draft and then the, we made changes and then other people kind of had to look at it. Um, and so, and that's the way it works in publishing. So you're, cause you know, once you've finished writing the first bit, then you have to see if it's all gonna work. And then we probably changed the words a bit when I started work on the artwork as well. Um, so, but only, only a few days for the first bit and then, um, you know, some changes here and there, but the, the artwork took a lot longer. The artwork took months. Um, you know, there was a lot of work in that. How did you draw or paint the art for the book? <clears throat> I started off with uh, just pencil sketches, uh, as I always do. Um, this was actually the first book that I coloured entirely on computer, that I painted on computer. Um, so where I've done books on computer before, or illustrations, I've always done line work on a drawing desk and then scanned that in, put it into the computer and then coloured it in on computer. But this is the first time I did the entire thing painted on computer. Um, so I use a program called Krita and it's, it, it works a very like paint, except that it's on a screen. Um, and it also means it's easier to change. So um, again, this is a book, there was a lot of people had to check it and see that it was gonna work okay. And um, so um, putting on a computer makes it easier to change. And in some ways it's quicker too. Not, not in every way, but um, first it all started off with pencil sketches, really rough sketches, and then a bit more finished. And then I scanned all that on the computer and, and kind of painted over them. And the last question for today, what advice would you give us about writing our own books? <clears throat> um, I would always say when you're starting out writing, that write what you like, write what you like reading about, um, have fun with it. If you don't have fun with it, you won't keep it up. So enjoy yourself with it. Um, you know, make yourself happy first before you're worrying about what you think other people would like to read. And just write what you love. Um, and it is a, it's a trade, what we call a trade. So there are skills you have to learn. It is something that has to be learned, but the more you do it, the better you get at it. And if you have fun with it, then you will do more of it. Um, so you will improve. So that's the main thing. The main thing is just have fun, write what you like. Um, read the, 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 the writers that you love and see how they do it, copy them um, and just have a good time with it. You know, later on you can get serious about it, but main thing is have fun. Hi everyone, I'm Ashi McGann and I'm going to be drawing a character from uh, my latest book for Green Schools. We want our park back and there's a squirrel in the book. So I'm just going to be drawing the squirrel. Now normally I use a pencil to start off and this is the same way I start off drawing anything or any of the illustrations from my books. But pencil doesn't show up very well when you're looking at a, a drawing pad on a screen. So I'm going to be using a thin pen and we can kind of pretend it's pencil. Um, and then I'll use a heavier marker and it'll make everything a little bit easier to see. But I always start off, as I said, with a pencil. Very nice and rough, and very sketchy. Don't worry about making everything too finished. Um, so we'll just pretend this is a pencil. Now, I'm going to start off, and it's a squirrel, so I'm going to start off with a very... Um, kind of, kind of cute head. And it has these... Very simple shapes at the start. And big eyes, big cute eyes. Now it's not going to look very neat, as I said. I'm just really marking lines out. And put little shoulders in there. So when I was young and I was looking at pictures in the books and I wanted to be an illustrator, I wanted to draw out the pictures in the books. And it used to drive me nuts that I couldn't do all these perfect lines at the start. I thought everything had to look perfectly neat at the start. And it was only much later that I realized that actually all these illustrators I love, they did this messy bit first that didn't look very good at the start. And then they kind of were able to hide the messy bit away and cover it with the neat drawing. So. So like I said, just very scribbly lines at the start. And of course you've got to have the big bushy tail. And 
and in the book they um all the animals and the kids get together and they're trying to have to try and fix up the park so i'm going to give them a i think we'll give them a shovel or a spade and not worried about being too neat this is just I'm setting it all out Okay, so that's going to look a bit weird now because um, it is done with a marker. But we are pretending it's a pencil, but just so everybody can be able to see. And now I'm going to use the thick marker, and the marker will make it look easier to see and also make my lines a bit neater. So just before I do that, I'm just going to mark in his nose where his nose is going to go. So if you imagine this is almost like it's just a map it's marking out where things are going to go before i start adding in little kind of neat details and i often start at the top of the page and this cute little nose and have these little tufts at the top of their ears squirrels so Into his mouth, uh, give him a big smile, a little bit of a teeth there. And like I said, those big, cute eyes. Now, if you notice. I'm going to put a little bit of a white there inside the eye as a highlight and it just makes the eye look a little bit more alive like that and then it's come down there for the shoulder the other shoulder there the tail now so tail is all just fur so we can have these are big sweeping curves maybe mark a little bit where the white goes in so if you're coloring in this bit here would be white and let's mark it down where it goes near his bum Page, never mind. And we're gonna get a little toe. And this is his belly. Bring that down there. Give him a little bit of a tuft for the fur on the other leg. Now, animals like this, like four-legged animals, often look like they have the legs bent backwards. But actually, this is the ankle. That bit that's bending backwards. It's not the knee, so the knee's up here. Um, they just have an extended foot. It does make it look like their legs are bent backwards. So I'm gonna draw in the arm. Little thumb. And now this squirrel doesn't have a name, so anybody who wants to kind of follow this along because it's on video, you can kind of, you can wind it back, wind it back, and uh, you can follow it along if you want, but you can name them because it could be a boy or a girl, who's to say, and you can make your own character out of it. Okay, so and I'm just going to put a little bit of a line here. That's where I kind of they have a bit of lighter fur. A little bit of line here, lighter fur for the belly. And 
So I'm just gonna just throw in a few more lines, a bit of shading. I'm gonna give it a bit of shadow here. Shadow helps, helps kind of sit it on the ground, make it feel more solid. So, now all the illustrations for the book were done um, with pencil first, and then I actually painted them up on computer. Um, but I learned to paint the same way everybody learns to paint, you know, poster colors and acrylics and all that. Um, but this is how it would start out looking, nice simple sketch first, and then I'd worked over to scan in the computer and work over it. So I think, I think that's pretty much done. So that's the squirrel from We Want Our Park Back. Thanks very much for watching. Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to this Climate Action Week special from Green Schools all over Ireland. We have some really special Green Schools book reviewers joining us today. And thank you all so much for reading our new storybook and telling us what you think. So as I say your name, why don't you give us a big wave and say hello to all of the classrooms around Ireland that are tuning in now because you're going to be on the big screen. Um, Christian, are you there? Give yeah. us a wave. Good stuff. And do we have Rory? Hey Rory. And what about Evie? Awesome. And Alex? <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, so who am I going to start with? Well, I'm going to go straight to Evie. You okay with that? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. First of all, did you like the book? Yes, I think it was very good. Yeah, awesome. What would you say um, is the youngest age that this book would be suitable for? I would say about three or four. Around okay, that. cool. Yeah. And what about the oldest age? Um, I think any age could read this because it's suitable for all ages, I think. Yeah. Okay, amazing. All right, cool. Um, okay, let's go to Rory. What did you think of the book cover when you first saw it? Um, I thought it showed diversity, that they were all sort of like looked quite different and then um, made me want to read the book. Amazing. I love your answer. And what about Christian? Did you think that this book was supposed to be a real story or an imaginary story when you first read it? A real story. Okay, cool. And what, what kind of made you think that? Did you think it was possible or have you ever seen anything like that in real life? Uh, I've seen stuff like that in real life. Very cool. Okay. And um, going over to Alex, what was your favorite bit out of the whole storybook? What did you like? Um, I liked when they said, I want our park back. <laughs> Why did you like that bit? Why was that your favorite? I just liked it. Okay, cool. So Chloe, tell me, did you like the storybook? Yeah. Amazing. What What did you think of the cover when you saw it? I thought something bad was happening in the park. Oh, really? And what did you think about the story? Um, like, what was your favourite bit? The ending. Why was the ending your favourite bit? Because the park was nice and healthy and the animals can move back into their homes. Amazing. Um, okay, here's a tricky one then. Does anyone want to tell me what was their least favourite bit out of the whole book? Anything at all? It's okay. <laughs> or was there any, at any point in the book where you like, ooh, like... Like the pollution that you or something? No. Yeah, Rory, go for it. And when they were like destroying the whole park and stuff, it wasn't really nice watch. Yeah, it wasn't my 
nice to see. But do you think that was like an important thing that had to happen um, in like in the story? Yeah, it was. Why? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, well, well, like I guess grown ups like um, sometimes do bad things as well. It's not just like children who mess everything up. Like grown ups can still mess things up as well. Yeah, we can make mistakes too. What do you think the author was trying to do? Like, why do you think he made some of those adults uh, make such big mistakes in the story? Um, well, it's sort of to symbolize um, climate change. Okay, do you remember any of the animals in the book? I remember there's a rabbit, a squirrel, ducks, um, um, how do you think any of those animals felt in the book? What do you think they were thinking? I think they were very upset that their home was being destroyed and this earth. Me too. Very good. Um, at any point in the book, did the illustrations make you laugh? Or what, what did you think of the drawings? What was that, Alex? I like the squirrel. <laughs> squirrel, yeah. And what about you, Rory? Uh, well, your man who was running away with fire coming out of his bum was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what class are you in, Chloe? I'm in first. Okay, cool. And do you think that other kids in your class would like to read the book? It depends if they're caring and kind. Oh, okay. Wow. Very cool. Um, when you looked at the children in the story, let's go to Christian for this one. What do you think those children were thinking at any point in the story? Um, that they want their park back. Definitely. Does everyone agree that was like the overriding, come on, give us back this space, please? Yeah. Okay, what about some of the animals? Alex, you mentioned the squirrel. What, what do you think, if you could hop inside the brain of that squirrel, what do you think they were thinking? Um, I want to see a next. <laughs> Very good, I like your squirrel impression. Amazing. Okay, we're nearly done. You guys are doing amazing. Last question, and this is for everyone. So just shoot up your hand if you want to answer it first or whenever you have your answer. What can young people your age do to help our local environment? Yeah, Christian? Plant trees. More plant trees. Amazing. Evie? Um, use less plastic. Yeah, we can reduce our plastics. Um, yeah, and recycle the plastic that we do use and the paper. Amazing. Yeah, Rory? Yeah, spread awareness about it. Very good. Yeah, that's kind of what, what, uh, what Green Schools does, ed trying to educate about climate change. And Alex? Um, we can steal their car keys so they can't go in the car. And... Um... Well, you cannot litter around. Okay, guys, I think we're done. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. A massive shout out and thank you to Rory, Chloe, Evie, Alex and Christian. Thank you all so much for reviewing our brand new storybook. We want our park back and happy Climate Action Week. <laughs>